If you will turn with me to the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, one of my favorite passages of scripture. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 in the Old Testament. It's all right to use your index if you're here. That's right. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. In it you will find 10 verses 1 through 10. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. When we all together, let us say amen. 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 And the hand of the Lord was upon me, Ezekiel said. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass around about them. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live again? Amen. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. And he said unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Yes. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring upon you, your flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Somebody say there was a noise. <laughs> And behold, a shaking, and bones came together, bones to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesy as he's commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great, great army. Let the church say amen. amen. I want to talk about or use as a subject of thought today, take another step. Right. Take another step. Y'all gonna pray with me, aren't you? Amen. amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, as we have gathered here today on this second week of this wonderful year, we talked about last week that I'm going to start my life again. And we found out that it's time that we stop making excuses. It's time now that we focus on things intentionally. It's time that we take action with the desires of our heart. It's time that we get responsible for the things that we are doing. It's time to realize that it's in God's time. When I realize that it's time to start my life, I have to begin to look at the weights and the sins that hold me down. Amen. It's so easy to live life and try to ignore or avoid the things that we have inside of us. But the sad thing about it is that the way that God moves in our life is that he will make us cross the paths of people and things that will push 
the right button at the right time to make the things that's inside to come out. I know I'm not talking to y'all, y'all are so holy that, but I know even for myself there's times that even when I try in my own strength to hold back the hurt and the frustration and, and even the attitude that my flesh would want to have, that God will begin to use the things that is the closest to me to begin to push the buttons in me to make the stuff that he doesn't want to come right out. I wish I had a witness in here today that because I come to tell you if you are really ready to live for God, that God has said it's time to start your life again. The thing I found out, Mother Joan, is that my life, if I'm not careful, it will be dependent upon the things that are around me than dependent upon the things that are above me. But when you begin to start your life, you will begin to realize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. How many know that God does not worry about what you have around you or even the condition of your flesh? But God is worried more about what's inside your heart and when your mind will abide and stay on him. Go ahead and touch your neighbor and say he wants you to stay with him. But I found out in this particular passage of scripture, Johnny, that the Lord had a problem and that problem was that the children of Israel, those that he had selected, those that he had chosen and called and anointed to be his people and he to be their God. God had a problem because the people kept following their flesh instead of following their favor. I found out Reverend Picton that the same problem abides today when it comes to the children of God because we'll cry out and say we love the Lord. We'll cry out and say we want to do this and do that for the Lord. We will open our ears up to the latest word. We will open up our mouths to the latest praise. But when the Lord begins to call accountability upon our lives, we find an excuse. I wish I had a witness in here. What you mean, Pastor? I find an excuse. The Lord tell you, go forgive your neighbor, but you find an excuse why you can't get to him. The Lord said, go and let go of the stuff that happened to you years ago, but you begin to remember everything like it happened yesterday. God began to tell you, get up out the bed, quit making excuses, get into the house of the Lord, because he has needs of you, but you will let a little cold hold you back. You will let a little ache make, hold you in the bed. The devil will even lie to you and make you think that I can have bedside baptism and I'll please the Lord. But how many know the Lord needs you, not just in the, his name, but he needs you in the fold because there's somebody that's walking in the path that you just came out of that they don't need a man another song they don't need another hand clap but they need somebody to testify if the Lord did it for me he can do it for you go ahead and look at Ava and say you sit beside a miracle you sit beside a miracle I had a flu in my body but I kept praising the Lord I had my nerves tore up but I kept my mind stayed on the right the thing that the Lord began to show us here in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel in Hebrew means God will strengthen. The Bible here shows us how he by strength be because the Lord had a problem and that was, that was false prophets teaching the people the wrong way to live. I come to tell you today, people of God, we're living in a time that it's time that our life ought to speak louder than our words. It's time that we quit talking about all we know how long we've been in the church and what we have in the church and what position we hold in the church. It's time to be about this business. Is there anybody that bear witness to that? I'm tired of hearing people say they're going to be this and be that for the Lord. Don't go ahead and show me more you can tell me. Because huh? I can see more about what you do than any word that come out your mouth. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody say take the next step. You just can't live and be insane. You got to move Deliverance, huh? that you can be free and free indeed. Right, 
when the Lord said, my people are in bondage. Uh -huh. The people are lost corn because they're fondling with the world. Oh, and as they fondle with the world, the world's dirt is getting all over them. Oh, go ahead and say to yourself, I'm just a dirty person that's trying to get delivered from my destiny. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been in the fight. There's always a little dirt. If you don't believe me, just go ahead and search your heart and mind right now. And whatever's going through it that don't line up, that's a little dirt. And oh, that little dirt, even though it's a speckle, even though you can barely see it, even when you got to get in the crack to get it, if you don't get the dirt out, it will shut down the system. I, I wish I had a witness in here today. Come on and help me, God. Come on, Joshua. He said, we had the anointing all over us. We had the favor all over. We knew we was about to take the land, but there was sin in the camp. And we saw this little bitty city called Ai. We had just conquered all these things. And we knew this little city could not compare to us. But you better understand, when God is in the midst of it, he can take a more and make it a mole here. Do I have a witness in here? And it said that they went to fight AI, but because the flesh was in the way, the flesh whipped them and turned them over to themselves when they left wondering what in the world just happened. And you've been wondering how in the world did this new year start out the way it had? I knew the Lord said there's a blessing for me. I knew this was a new opportunity. But what is it that everything is falling around me like it's just like it's hitting the hill in a handbasket? you to receive it. Amen. Chapter 36 says that the heathen began to mock the believers. They began to mock them because they laughed at how believers walk around with their Bibles and their crosses and with their songs and their the cliches of praise the Lord I'm blessed and highly favored. But when it comes down to when the heat hits the road, we feeble and fall apart like we have no God. Listen, if it takes all that and nothing happens to them, I'd rather stay in the world. But I come to tell you, people of God, it's time to take the next step. It's time that we leave from just having church till we start living a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto God. Because when we look at the text now, we begin to see that chapter number 636 tells us the reason why Ezekiel had to go through a process or the steps of his salvation. The Bible says in chapter 36 that God began to get sick of hearing the heathen mock the people of God and he was tired of seeing the people of God act more like the world than to raise up to the situation. The Bible goes on to say that the Lord began to have sorrow not for the people but for his name. Go ahead and touch your name and say I'm only here because his name got me up. I wish I had a witness in here. The Bible says that the Lord began to get sick of the people mocking the people of God because they was the representatives of his name and he said there shall be no other God before me there shall be no other name above my name so the Lord said those same folks that I chose he said I'm going to rescue you not that you deserve it but because my name is on the line I wish I had a witness to realize the blessing that's in your life that grace and mercy does not rescue you because there's something special about you but there's something special inside of you uh, that it keeps on helping you out. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. Uh, the Bible goes on to say now uh, that because of this we can understand uh, now reconciliation and forgiveness. Uh, reconciliation means to reconcile, to restore and reunite in a relationship. Uh, to reconcile means uh, that I lay our differences aside uh, and I choose to forgive. Uh, Webster Divine's forgiveness is this, that forgiveness
this is when I intentionally and voluntarily process and forgive by letting go of the things that offended me. I begin to undergo a change in my feelings and attitude regarding the affair. Don't get it twisted. I know what you did to me. I know how bad you set me up. I know how deep you cut me. Don't you think that I'm acting like this did you wasn't nothing that was severe. But I'm making up in my mind that this weight that I'm carrying around me, these shackles that I'm holding on to, I realize that you still are controlling me. And I don't know about you, but I ain't gonna let no man or no woman control my life. I'm not gonna let no situation dictate how I respond. So I choose to forgive you, to untie the cord, not that you are self-forgiveness, not that you deserve forgiveness, but I wanna be free. I wanna be sanctified. I wanna be filled with the Holy Because my name means more yes. than what you're doing before me. Thank you, Jesus. That you are delivering me to the point where I love you more than anything around. I wish I had a witness in here today. Do you love God enough to let go of that person that broke your heart? Do you love God enough to let go of that person that let you down? into your promise. God said, I'm going to give you a new heart. Yes, thank you, Lord. Give you a new mind. Yes, thank you, Lord. That I won't have to convict you any longer. Yes, you will convict yourself yes. when you step out of my love. Is there anybody in the house that's ready to say, I'm sick and tired of breaking God's heart. I'm ready to please him with everything that I am. I want to please him with my mind. I want to please him with my heart. I want to please him with my actions. I want to please him with my body. I know my flesh get the tempted sometimes. I know my flesh get the yearning sometimes. But I want him more than what my flesh can have. Because five minutes can make me fail. But if I get in him for a lifetime, I'm going to let you be the prophet that brings a change of ways. So the Bible says, now I'm in the text now. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord got a hold to him. And it said that the Spirit of the Lord carried me by the Spirit. Which means you will never take the next step on your own. If you try to change by your own flesh, it'll be by your own flesh that you fail every time. If you are looking to reconcile with a person with your flesh, that person will hurt you again. But when you choose to reconcile with God, no matter what they do, no weapon form. This is what the text says. That the Bible got a hold to Ezekiel. And God said, I'm just not going to go and put you in the promised land. Amen. But I got to turn your sorrow into a salvation. I got to take your why me and say, why not me? How does God do it, Stephanie? The Bible says that he sat Ezekiel in a valley. Not green pastures, not up on a mountain, but down in the valley. Pastor, what's down in a valley? In a valley, you 
you will hear echoes <laughs> that when you say something, it will repeat itself. <laughs> Oh, in a valley, you will see shadows. <laughs> that if you don't know what the shadow, the light is shining on, you will feel the shadow more than the sun that's provided. I wish I had. I wish I had a witness in here. <laughs> when you're in a valley, it can be a dark place. It can be a tight place. It can be an open place. It can be a cold place. But the thing that I love about the valley, Nivea, is that the Lord said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. Notice he said walk. Somebody say, take another step. Which means you can't just sit in the valley because if you stay in the valley too long, you will kill yourself because the voices will talk louder than the boy. If you stay in the valley too long, you will fear the dark instead of glorifying God that you get delivered in the dark. But when I start walking, I begin to say, Yay, though I walk, the Lord is with me. Somebody say, Take the next step and you will see God take two more for you. I wish I had a witness here. In the valley. He put a mark in the valley. Pastor what was in the valley. He said, I let Ezekiel see the condition of my people. I let Ezekiel see the condition of those who's supposed to be holding the water of life. He said, I let Ezekiel see that people's hearts was as cold as bones. People's hearts was as hardened from the issues of the world. Yo, oh, Brother Jeremy, I realize as I look amongst the crowd and I learn the people of God more and more that God is saying my people are just like these dry bones. He's saying they're walking around and they got to work, but inside their hearts have been hardened by the wounds of the world. People are walking around praising the Lord, praising my name, but have not forgiven the person that stabbed them and left them for dead. People are walking around with a smile on their face, but inside they're dead to emotions and they are not sensitive to anything. He said that's a dangerous thing. I want you to know it's a dangerous thing when you walk around and profess that you're a child of God and you can't love your brother. Because you've been designed to love and you've been designed to bring the captives and set them free. But if you don't walk in your destination he said you will walk in the pain of it. I wish I had a witness. Is there anybody that just want to stay in their burdens? Is there anybody that want to stay dead in the valley? I'm so glad nobody jumped up and shouted. That lets me know that you're listening to me clear. But if you're ready and sick and tired of being one of those bones that was in the valley, hear the words of the Lord. I wish I had a witness in here. That when you begin to hear the word, listen what the prophet was told. The Bible said that he said, I made him start walking. He made me walk around the bones and he said I want you to count the bones and he said I started counting Pastor Donald and what I saw that there was so many bones in the valley that I had to stop counting and say it was too many to put a number on it no wonder we can't get people to move from just having church because church won't mess with your bones church you can sit idle and dead and nobody will know that you're there church will make you just rest and get comfortable uh, but when you begin to become a disciple uh, when you begin to get delivered uh, you begin to have to move your bones uh, when you just can't let your bones sit there uh, that's why I refuse to get old uh, no matter what my number changes to uh, my body will not change uh, cause I'm gonna keep working it out uh, I'm gonna keep moving it out uh, I'm gonna start breathing more uh, I'm gonna become greater uh, cause he's greater in me Somebody say, take another step. But I found out something else. God also, I wish I had the time to teach you like a woman. God also revealed who these bones believe will return to. God revealed who these bones belong to. Notice.
notice now that all these bones have been stripped of identity. All these bones have been stripped from words. These bones had a position. What was the position, Pastor? Well, it said that when I saw these bones, they just wasn't a whole lot of them, but they was very dry. Oh, I'm talking to a dry person in here today. <laughs> that knows that I keep coming because of something. I don't know what it is, but it keeps on making me keep coming. It's something in me that even though I want to give up, I keep trying a little bit harder. It's something that keeps telling me to give up on that person and throw in the towel, but something keep making it. I'm going to introduce you to the something today. Oh, I got a nugget for you right here. When you take another step, when you begin to move and you get exposed to something and nothing happens, it ain't for you. But if you begin to move and something begins to happen and it catches your attention, you better quit trying to run from it. I believe I realize more than ever, even when I wanted to get away from God, I couldn't get away from him. Even when I wanted to stop coming to church, something made me get up and go in the house. And I wanted to walk out my house. Something made me say, well, I'm just going to pray a little bit longer. When I wanted to give up on my kids, something made me start praying for them. When I didn't even want to pray for them. No wonder David said it like this. If I got a sacrifice of praise, I'll sacrifice it because my desire is to dwell in the house. When I start taking another step, yes. if it don't make you move, it ain't for you. That's why I don't worry so much now when she get an attitude and walk out. Because I know if they belong in the house, God will make them get back in. That's why I ain't got a bag folks to come to church because if the Lord is truly over their life and they in the Lord's hand, I ain't got to make them do right. God will. Go ahead and put their name and say, quit trying to make them live right. Just turn them over to God and he'll straighten out every crooked place. How bad do you want it? Oh, he says, son of man, do you believe that these bones can live again? Why would he ask the prophet the question when the prophet has already seen the position of bones? Why would he tell you to keep loving when you see that loving is causing you more pain than the person that you're trying to love? Why would he ask you the question? Do you believe that these bones can live again? Well, I want to answer the why, tell you the reason why he wants you to know is because you are the prophet, and prophet means to foretell what's not is about to be. And if I ever talk like that, speak those things that are not as though they were. And if God called you to be the prophet of your household, you can't keep sitting mouth bellowing with them dead bones. You can't keep fighting with them dead bones. You can't keep wrestling with a dead bone. It ain't gonna get you nowhere but in and nowhere. But if you start prophesying to them bones, if they start acting with hatred, you keep loving with love. If they keep talking stupid, you No. Everything that I need to know. If we would ever make up our mind that we would stop taking it in our hands, stop trying to change folks, and just say, Lord, you have your way. If you have your way, I know I'll end up in the promised land. If you have the way, no weapon born against me shall prosper. If you have the way, you can take a little and make a blessing out of it. Have your Faith coming by hearing. Hearing by the word. How shall they hear unless one be sent? So he said, I sent you to a dead 
and dry situation, that when I resurrect this situation, you will know there's no room for your glory. It's just for you to tell your story. Go ahead and bump your neighbor and say, you see the glory, but you don't know my story. Oh, Ezekiel, come on. The Bible says that God began to move, and Ezekiel began to go down to the bones. But look what the text began to say, that Ezekiel did not ask his opinion in. See, the thing with reconciliation and forgiveness, sometimes you gotta mute your mouth so that your words won't get in the way of the words of God. But when you mute your mouth, that doesn't mean that you have stopped talking, but you're not talking at nobody, but you're talking above where they are. And that's the thing I love about God, Anisha, that when God finds me, he don't talk at where I am. He begins to speak when he wants me to move. Ain't the Lord alright? That's why he said in John 15 that I chose you and you didn't choose me. But when you become greater, somebody shout greater. When you want greater, when you live greater, when you desire greater, when your faith gets greater. He says, I'm about to move. But look what the Lord here said. He said, I'm taking you from the place that I found you at. And I'm taking you to a place where you can be effective. Look what the prophet said. The prophet said that when I started speaking, he said, I didn't know what was about to happen. The Lord told me just to tell the bones. Hear the words of the Lord. You don't have to give your opinion, people, but just let the words of your heart and the meditation of your heart be acceptable unto thy sight. Ain't the Lord alright? If you need more money, quit worrying about what you don't have and start speaking those things that are not. Lord, I thank you that I got a better job. Lord, I thank you that I got a more in my account. If your marriage is in shambles, quit talking about what is not. Quit talking about what they ain't doing. Quit talking about
stand up, but to be an army. Is there anybody here that can stand to their feet? Say, I'm taking another step, but I just don't want to be in the number. I just don't want to be saved, but I want to become a violent. I want to become a violent with a cheat of suffering violence, but a violent take a back to Give me my children. intentional yes. with your reconciliation. Yes. Because the longer you hold a grudge, Amen. the longer you reminisce in the pain, Amen. you're still dead. Amen. And you're dry. Amen. You're very dry. Yeah. And if God is blessing you and you dry, what will happen when you get saturated? To be a mighty army. Yes. Open heart, he's raising us up. Yes, 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 yes. Because we're yes. maturing now. Yes. That we just don't talk about being in the church. Amen. We're talking about being a child of God. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a big difference. Yes. Because being in the church, yes. you can be unsaved and get All baptized. Right. Yes. You go in a dry devil, yes. and you come out a wet devil. Become a child of God. Old things are passed away. All things become new. I love Romans 8 28. For all things work together for the good of them that love God and is called according to his plan. The Lord sent the prophet to call to the bones. Yes. And because the bones could witness with the prophet's mm -hmm. words, mm -hmm. the bones started moving. Amen. That's why some of you that used to couldn't even clap your hand, you can't help yeah. but clap your hand. Some of you used to keep a proud on your face. Yeah. Now you can't help but to smile. Yeah. Even when you want to frown, yeah. the Lord makes you smile. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's saying, you are the next prophet. Yes. Yes. You're the next soldier in my army yeah. that can show people that saw you when you were dry. Yeah. Say, man, there's something different about you. Yeah. And that's when you can tell them not what you think, but hear the words of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Can you receive that today? Yes. Yes. Can you glorify? What you thought was a battle was on the training ground to get you ready for your blessing. What you thought was the devil, it was God purging out everything that doesn't belong. If he's used you up to this point, now that you're completely healed, you hadn't seen nothing yeah, yet. Man. It's time to take the next step. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't want you just to say I'm a Christian. I want your life to speak for you by I want you to be a light in the midst of valley situations. I want you to be a leader, not by your education, not by your knowledge, but by the wisdom of what you had to overcome. People say all the time, where did you learn all this stuff? What school did you go to? Did you go to Southern West? Did you go up to Spartanburg? Did you go to a big university down in Atlanta? I said, no, I didn't get to go to none of them places. But I went to the University of Sheepdome and Crucifixion and Resurrection. I went to a place where nobody else wanted to go. 
But there was suffering and sickness. But there was pain and aches. But when I came out, I just didn't have a degree that I could put on the wall. I put on a degree that I could wear on my heart. Oh, hallelujah. I just wonder today, will you take on this degree? Because if you take on this degree, Proverbs chapter 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct thy path. When you just don't know what to do, prophesy to yourself and say, Hear the words of the Lord. And he will take you to the next step.